If you're thinking about moving to Minnesota or you're already in Minnesota, there's a good chance you're actually in the Twin Cities area. There are so many good things about the Twin Cities area and there are a few things that are not so great about the Twin Cities area. So we're gonna be talking about both today. And the first thing you might wanna know is the Twin Cities are actually Minneapolis and St. Paul. They're separated by the Mississippi River, and that's why they're called the Twin Cities. And the surrounding suburbs are considered the Twin Cities metro area. The metro area is fairly spread out and home to about 3.5 million people. My name is Chris O'Connell. I'm a mortgage loan originator in the Minneapolis area, and this channel is dedicated to helping you better prepare to buy your first home or your next home. What you might already know about Minnesota is that we have all four seasons. And because we have all four seasons, we play all sports in Minnesota, which is awesome. And we have all the major sport teams in Minnesota as well. We've got football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and soccer. And, but what's really cool is that we have some new stadiums throughout the Twin Cities as well. We have Target Field for Minnesota Twins, which is fairly new. Uh, we have the Minnesota Vikings Stadium, which was just built a couple of years ago and we actually have a brand new Allianz Field Stadium in St. Paul for the Minnesota United which is our professional soccer team so it's always great to know that there's always somebody to root for throughout the year for every season we've got a professional sports team to to root for and we've got a really cool venue to go to if you like watching sports and going and seeing live sports and other than sports there are plenty of fun things to do Valley Fair in Shakopee, Minnesota is one of the biggest amusement parks in the upper Midwest. There's all kinds of rides, including the Wild Thing, which is a huge roller coaster. There are multiple roller coasters in this amusement park. And there's also a water park, which is super fun, again, for all ages. In Bloomington, Minnesota, we have the Mall of America. There are, of course, a million places to shop in the Mall of America, but there's also bars and restaurants and hotels attached to the Mall of America. There is also a amusement park right in the middle of the Mall of America, as well as an underwater aquarium. And now this is actually kind of cool and something that's fairly new, but there's this aquarium in the Mall of America. You can walk under this aquarium and see sharks and turtles, and there's all kinds of uh, exotic fish and stuff at this aquarium. So that's pretty cool right in the Mall of America. Speaking of animals, we have the Minnesota Zoo in Apple Valley. This zoo is a huge zoo. It's very well kept and there are all kinds of animals here. Lions, tigers, bears, all the big cats, bison, horse, wolves, all kinds of stuff at the Minnesota Zoo. And you can go there in the winter or the summer. It's great. It's a, a awesome family event and also just a fun place to uh, go even if you're an adult or going on a date or something like that. We also have the Como Zoo, the Como Park Zoo and Conservatory in St. Paul, which is an amazing place. This zoo is free to get into, which is kind of cool. And it also has this conservatory, uh, which is this big, beautiful greenhouse uh, where you can go in, again, summer or winter. It's a great place to go in the winter to escape the cold because you walk into this big conservatory and it's like you're walking into a jungle so it's warm and humid and they have all kinds of plants and exotic plants and bonsai trees and stuff like that. It's really cool. And speaking of nature, the Twin Cities is full of parks and beaches and lakes and bike trails everything for everybody. Uh, Minnesota is known as the, the land of 10,000 lakes. Well, we've got a bunch of lakes in the Twin Cities. So no matter where you are, you're probably really close to a lake and a beach and a park and bike trails. You can walk, hike, camp, fish, boat, anything that you really want to do in the winter and the summer. Again, winter and summer, there's something for everybody in all seasons. Anywhere you are in the Twin Cities area, you're probably going to be close if not a city park, a region park, or even a state park is not too far away anywhere you are in the Twin Cities. So that's really cool. We love nature and outdoors. And I think we do a good job of maintaining and keeping the parks clean and stuff like that. So anywhere you are in the Twin Cities, there is a park where you can take the kids, you can hike, you can walk, bike, and just really enjoy the outdoors at really any season, including winter, into ice fishing or ice skating. We clear off the lakes and stuff like that to go ice skating or play hockey in the winter. And of course, summer, you know, you name it, 
picnics, barbecues, anything you want to do at the parks, get together with friends and family. One surprising thing that you might not know about the Twin Cities is that we have a really cool restaurant scene. We have something for everybody when it comes to food. We have really good food and we take a lot of pride in our food scene here in the Twin Cities and microbreweries. We have breweries everywhere, it seems like in the Twin Cities now. It's a really popular thing to do, but we have a lot of cool uh, different types of breweries. So you can get a drink, you can hang out, you can get a bite to eat, you can have events and stuff. Stuff like that at, at our breweries, microbreweries throughout the Twin Cities. One of the, the really popular ones is Surly Brewery in Minneapolis. Surly Brewery in Minneapolis is a great place to get food and beer and they have events and concerts and stuff like that. Same with Summit Brewery in St. Paul. Same thing, they make awesome beer and it's a great place to hang out and they've got concerts and stuff like that as well. Speaking of music, Minneapolis St. Paul music scene is awesome. We really do support our local artists and local musicians and we've got a lot of venues throughout the Twin Cities. You know, First Avenue in Minneapolis is super popular and very well known internationally. And Palace Theater is in Lower Town, St. Paul. And we've also got other venues and uh, places to watch music indoors and outdoors throughout the Twin Cities. So the music scene in um, the Twin Cities is really good. The other thing I'll mention that I think we're very fortunate to have is a great school system. Minnesota and the Twin Cities school districts typically do rank higher in the national public school rankings. We also have a lot of STEM schools throughout the Twin Cities. Science, technology, engineering, and math are kind of new schools that are popping up all over the Twin Cities. So if you're somebody who wants to specialize or learn something specific uh, to those categories, you can look at STEM schools in different areas of the Twin Cities. And of course, we have private schools and charter schools as well. Uh, but education is obviously very important. And I think other than just the public school rankings, we have a lot of diversity when it comes to different school options as well. Now, if you're going to be in those high ranking school areas, you're probably going to pay more for your housing. Minneapolis and Twin Cities area have a little bit higher housing costs when you take a look at the national averages, but we are pretty diverse. So it all kind of depends on where you are in the Twin Cities. And if you're going to be in a higher ranking school district or a more desirable area, of course, you're going to have a higher median home price, which I think is typical no matter where you go. But the good thing about the Twin Cities is you kind of have a variety, again, depending on where you want to be in the Twin Cities. Twin Cities is a fairly large area, so you can find kind of whatever you're looking for. So again, you can spend you know millions of dollars on a house but you can also spend you know a couple hundred thousand uh, depending on where you are or what you're buying but housing definitely plays into the overall cost of living in the Twin Cities area and in the Twin Cities food healthcare utilities are actually a lot cheaper compared to a lot of other places nationally although one thing that is more expensive is our transportation costs we have a fledgling train system which we've been building out for the last five years ten years probably so it's great if you're near the train is really convenient to go you know into Minneapolis and St. Paul and between and the bus system is really good too but because of the weather because of the winter it's super cold and nobody wants to be walking to a bus station or hanging outside uh, more than you have to so big thing with living in the Twin Cities is it's spread out as well and especially when you're talking about the suburbs and the metro area you know it's more spread out so you're probably not going to be super excited to walk to the bus stop or walk outside in order to get to work or the grocery store or something like that so if you're going to be living in the Twin Cities you know you probably ideally have a car to get around unless you're actually in Minneapolis or St. Paul downtown areas uh, where things are a little more condensed a little more accessible if you're in the suburbs of course you know you probably do need a car um, and that's mostly I think because of the winter it just makes it really hard to you know access public transportation in 20 below weather and so speaking of traffic um, if you are in the you know first ring suburbs or Minneapolis St. Paul of course there is congestion traffic congestion and that's probably only going to get worse I mean we do a lot of things I mean, we try to invest in our infrastructure and build new roads and trains and give people access to public transportation. But traffic congestion, yeah, it's getting worse. Um, it's probably only going to get worse until we have, you know, drones and stuff uh, flying over the roads and stuff like that. One other thing to know if you are in the Twin Cities, it's a progressive city. It's a blue city and we typically vote Democrat every time. That may or may not be appealing to you, but in the Twin Cities is mostly blue. 
outside of the Twin Cities, mostly red. So you're going to have a little more conservative population outside of the Twin Cities versus the Twin Cities. And I think that's fairly typical of any kind of metro area, but we do vote blue. So that might be something to consider or something to think about, um, not to get into politics, but just stating the facts. Are you living in the Twin Cities right now? What is the number one thing that you love about the Twin Cities? And also, what is the number one thing you hate about the Twin Cities? I would love to hear from you. Put them in the comments below. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for updates because we're talking about all things Minnesota related, specifically mortgage related and real estate related. So if you have a question about real estate or mortgage, feel free to put those in the comments as well. My contact information is in the description and so you can contact me anytime directly. Be sure to check out some of my other videos about mortgage related topics or other Minnesota related topics and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for updates because this channel is dedicated to helping you better prepare to buy your first home or your next home.